So what about a situation where, we're, where we have cubes that actually follow the laws of turning 90 degrees? So you can see in this, this is a typical example. This has a a lot of similarity to here. It has no edges, only corners, so it should be fairly simple. But the thing that's different about that, because it's even and even, we can, of course, do our scrambling, doing our 180 degree turns from the bottom, do our 90 degree turns up here, which is what we'll do, get ourselves a good scramble. But what you can also do in these cases is you can stop at 90 degrees and continue to turn. So you can turn it in various and sundry positions and completely get yourself hopelessly shape-shifted away from where you want to be. Again, the rule of thumb first is we want to try to get ourselves back to the cuboid form. But what's important, before you do that, if you have an even number, you can get yourself back to the cuboid form without any worries. If you have an odd number, then you have to define a center, because that center is what's going to be fixed and needed to gu guide what's supposed to be on the top or what's supposed to be on the bottom. It can't, it can't be arbitrary. And if you don't get it to the cuboid form in the right configuration, you're going to have to rescramble. It'll be impossible to get with 180 degree turns. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to define a bottom here. I'm just going to do it kind of like a two by two. Put this up here, here, so I've got a white and orange. There's no problems. So now I want to move all of the blues up here. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do the same strategy as I did with the last step of a three by three when I had to flip the corners up. So these are where they need to be uh, these are not, so I'm just going to do three by three strategies to move it up. I'll just keep doing this until this is up. Now, all right, so that gets me back to the cube form. This is kind of where it needs to be. Now it's just a matter of solving this exactly like we did um, with here. So I'm going to put my middles back into place. This is going to sort of define what I'm going to use as my color scheme. And I, I this is really arbitrary. These, these are where they need to be. These are where they need to be. This one is not. So this I'm gonna borrow from up here because this uh, I can't flip over. So I'm gonna flip this to here using um, that uh, same strategy that we're using. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. So there it is there. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing over here with this strategy. I guess it didn't really matter the top or the bottom. I'm just solving the middle first. And now that everything is where it needs to be, we'll just put this here. Good, good. This needs to flip up here. We know how to do that. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Turn it. 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. And we have the bottom, we have the middle solved here. Now we're just going to solve this guy. Move this into here. Green and red. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. So we have the parity here, this is solved, and this is solved here. We just have parity, and we get out of it in exactly the same manner in which we discovered, only in this case it's two instead of one. So when we turn it, we don't just do the 2U up here, we've got to do it here and then here. So hold it here, here, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2F. To you, to you, to F, to R, to you, and it's solved. Same strategy. All right, well, could we apply that to this guy? This is a three by three by five, which means we can get it scrambled similarly. We got our 180 degree scrambles of various types. And just kind of randomly turning this around. When I first bought this, I thought that this was the only way to scramble it. And then I read about the rules of cuboids, and I remember thinking, could it be that this actually shapeshifts? Is this puzzle really much harder than I thought? So I remember waking up and turning it 90 degrees and saying, wow. So because it's a three and five, you can do 90 degree turns like this. So with the even ones, 
the centers were arbitrary, you didn't have to define them. This one has defined centers, which could be restrictive to you if you don't line them up appropriately before you get them to the cuboid form. Okay, that's pretty good. Looks pretty impressive. So the first step when dealing with this, the good news is that this provides something that the, uh, the even ones didn't, which is a definitive, um, definitive centers. So with that said, I'll start off with the yellow. Now, here's what my goal is. My goal is to get it into cuboid form only insofar as I can move my centers appropriately. So I'm just gonna to try to put this into configuration. Here's an orange over here, here's orange, and I know that the blue will come over here. So look for the blue here, which is right here. So I can move this really any way that I want. Turn it here, here, get the cross there. Green, so red must be next. This will come up here. All right. So here's my nice cross. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill in any yellows, and it really doesn't. So yellow, blue, and red. Putting that in place. Move this down. Now I'm just looking at it as a, as a three by three here. And this is all just kind of intuitive. No need to really get into the details of that. I can let you figure that out. So here's the side here. And now I'm getting, what I'm gonna do now, now that I've kind of put this into something of a, of a cross, is I wanna put the middles. So this is gonna be the middle. One, two, three, four, five. This has to be put in place appropriately before I get it to the, uh, to the cube form. So as I'm getting it to the cube form, that's what I'm gonna do. I, I, I have to roll that in. What's gonna come up top here if this is on this level here, this is gonna flip up here and that's at the right place. Anything that you see down here is in the wrong place. So this over here, this is in the wrong place. So this is actually a piece that's gonna be in the middle. So let's find it where it's supposed to be. So here is the red, red and green, and I'm gonna flip this down to here using the familiar three by three algorithm. Nothing new about this, nothing new about being a tower here. So just have to Skew your mind a little bit, use your imagination, so it ended up, um, it ended up where it's supposed to be. Um, anything else? All right. So what you see is it's tempting to now just move all of these up, but I'm not gonna do that yet because I don't like what this looks like. This here is supposed to be here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this up to here and flip it down there. Trust me, it's gonna be easier. So I'm gonna flip this down here. Look at all these cubes. Anyway, so that put that here, this white one, and I'm gonna find what I just did. So this green and orange is supposed to come down here and that's where I'm gonna put it. And there it is here. All right, so what about this? Well, we got the blue and orange here. So I'm gonna move this here to move this down to here. And there it is here. All right, how about here? We've got a red and blue here. So this gets flipped over here. If what I'm doing is unfamiliar to you, let me know. But I think you probably got it. So I've got my middle here and I've got and I know it's in the right configuration. So now that I've done that, I can get it back to the cuboid form and do exactly the same strategy. To flip this up here is I use typical Rubik's Cube um, um, strategies with that because I need to move this up to get these down to here if need be, otherwise they're trapped. So I'm gonna get my cross, I'm gonna put my edges in, same algorithm here. I'm gonna try to get uh, the cross over here, so R, I mean, F R U R I U I F I, that didn't sound healthy. All right, do that again here. F R U R I U I F I, that's good. I have my line, so we know that one more should do it. F R U 
RIUI. I find the joy of these algorithms is I don't change what I just did here. So here's my cross. Now it's just a matter of putting these in and it really doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not trying to solve for the sides here. This was, I did this just to kind of guide us a little bit of where things were supposed to be. So I'm just going to do it like I did with the last step of the Rubik's Cube. And I'm using my created middle as my anchor. I'm not letting my finger stray from that. There we go. All right, so we're back at the cuboid form and my criteria has been met. I've defined my middle um, and this is gonna be, this is gonna help guide the rest of the way and the rest is just solving it exactly the same way. So I'm now gonna solve these two and then I'm gonna solve these two. So once again, let's get across. I'm just awash with blues and oranges. So here's blue, uh, here's that orange. I need to get a green, I'm gonna borrow it from here. So move it down here, put it down here, back. And up, that keeps this orange here, puts this green into place. I need the red. I'm going to borrow red from up here. This moves twice. Here, here, and back. So that's okay. So now we've got the, the middles in the right place. Now I'm just going to borrow the edges from the top here. How about a blue and orange? Come on, got to give me something. Here we go, blue and orange. So without moving this middle, Same algorithm. There it is here, created parity here. So I'm going to bear that in mind. I'll just move this. I don't really care what's going to happen here. I can fix that. Green and red. Here's a green and red. And it's the right one. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Did two things. Fixed our parity. Put this in. Orange and green. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Yep, red and blue, red and blue. Okay, so we've now solved this domino, so to speak. Well, no, this is the middle, we've solved the bottom, now we've got to solve the top. Look for that sandwich, do we have it? Yep, we have it here. Move it to the side, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Turn, and then turn about this middle here. 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. Didn't change this. Remember, this is not a parity creating um, algorithm. Now we've got all of our middles. We'll start just moving them back in place. Now this one is a parity creating situation. Okay, so we have this and we have parity. So I'm gonna fix that because when we do these two, we're gonna have like bilateral parity or something or too, uh, it, it won't be good. So anyway, we'll just put this back into place. Same technique, it's the URF algorithm. Split it over here, 2U, 2R, 2F. And turn it over here, 2F, 2R, 2U. And because it was just one, we have to finish it off with another 2F, so we have our middle here. So that's all fine. And now we just solve for this. Now you may have found that we got rid of our cross, but that's okay, we can easily get that back, it's over here. Uh, the reason that that happened is by doing that we actually created a parity situation over here. So with this one we're just, we're just going to turn that here. So we can kind of look at this as something of a parity, but at least it's together, and hopefully it'll be washed out as we're fixing the bottom here. So we've got a green and orange. Line that up with a green and orange. So that'll be here, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. We fix that, see, no worries. Put this back in here. Red and green, that would be this one. Red and green, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Exactly the same thing we did way back when with this guy. This goes in. So now that we've got it back to the cuboid, it's really the same thing that we've seen. Got some parity here, but we have all sandwiches here. So we're just going to start flipping and see what happens.
All right, we got a parity, but we've got one more left, and that should fix the whole thing. And it is salt. So that's how to deal with that variation. When you have the ability to shape shift, whether you have even or odds, and it's really the same kind of thing. Now as you start getting to the more higher order cubes, like these guys, the only challenge with this, it's really the same kind of thing. This is a four by four by five. So let's say we're at this point and I wanted to get it back. I want to move this to here. I just treat these two like they were corners and do a corner swap to R, U, to R, U, I, to R, turn, turn, to R, U, I, to R. I don't think this cube has much life in it yet. So I was able to do that. And then I can swap these back by moving it this way. It'll treat it, these en masse like they were corners to R. To R, U, to R, to U, to R, to U, to R, U, to R, to R. To R. Okay. So that's just by way of explanation, but I can refer you to the rest of the tutorial in terms of how to do that, strategies of getting the center. I have to define these centers, define these centers. Once I do that, I collapse it into a three by, uh, I basically collapse it into a three by three by, um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, three by three by five, where this is all treated as a center and this is like a three over here. So that's, that's the strategy with that.